All right. Monday night sports talk. Suchi boy couldn't make it through the snowstorm. He'll uh, be here uh, next week and we'll uh, be rolling again. Reavers and Ricey. A uh, reunion. We should have had Manny Hill here. We oh, been we good should chair. have. We should have gotten Manny Hill here. I had a Ryder Royce reference the other day when I cited the Wolves as a bad loss. Mm-hmm. Yes, a bad. That was a bad loss. But uh, Bobby Hagan's retirement uh, ceremony out at Vikings uh, Thursday. Yes, I think Rufsey got invited. He and the Rufsey and oh, they uh, were tight. Rufsey, Rufsey and Bobby and I. Uh, maybe Manny might be there too. I'm not sure if Manny's coming in, but. Uh, well, congrats to, to Bobby on Bobby, a, on a yeah, great career. Great career. He was the survivor, baby. <laughs> you make it through all those administrations that want to uh, that want the story spun. Uh, that's pretty successful. May I ask a question? Yes. You know, I know how much you you loathe when someone says, "I, I got a book idea." Tell me you'll write the Bob Hagen book. <laughs> if he ever, he's not the kind of guy that would tell the that's secrets. That's true. He would not. He would not tell the secrets. But here's a guy. He was as close to Sid in the last 20 years as anybody. He would take Sid to lunch and just listen to the BS. And then he was really tight with Dark. You know, I mean, he found mm-hmm. one of the guys that found Dark dead. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, and he would get them together at lunch once in a while and referee the ba- the, the, <laughs> the, the same quibbling those of you enjoyed on Sunday. The Sunday, Sunday sports, sports show. Sports show was on steroids when they were oh having lunch God. there together without an audience because Sid, of course, I mean, uh, Dark would show up at those lunches with only one, you know, goal, which was not to, you know, he liked eating too, but to needle Sid, to agitate Sid, and he'd get him rolling, and Hagen would be, Hagen would, he'd, do, he'd twice a month, he'd, He'd have lunch twice a month with Sid, at least sometimes once a you know, sometime weekly. But he'd get dark maybe, to, and then he'd dark too, but then he'd get them together about, oh, 10 times a year. Oh, my God. Have to referee that, which, which. <laughs> That's a reality you know show. You what his secret of success was, though? What's that? He was a great guy. Everybody loved him. Never told you anything out of school. That's right. He never, uh, they could never trace anything they didn't want public or back to any him. inside material back to him yep. he was hey how you doing but he didn't uh he didn't talk out of school he didn't lie to you he didn't he didn't tell you the truth either he right. just he just you know whatever they publicly released he he talked about it he'd get you people on the telephone he did you know did all that stuff but he did not uh, talk out of school which is you know Unlike Pat Forcia, who, you know, when he was in a similar type of role, he would. Uh, I, he you would know, just dealing him. with Bob, I didn't, obviously wasn't as close to him as you are, but great guy. He always was, you know, if he needed to schedule a guest or whatever, he was, he was great in assisting that. But I will give him this credit. I, I know you remember this when, sadly, uh, the young man that, that passed away as a result of the, the construction at U.S. Bank Stadium. Yes. He happened to be a kid from my hometown and he went to school with my brother <laughs> And Bobby was the one that helped assist getting him uh, a jersey for his brother, mm-hmm. which was really cool and meant a lot to the family back then. That was that was all Bob Hagen. He's the one that uh, I was corresponding with to make to, to make that happen. That was all Bob. And he, just a true uh, class act. He was uh, close with Zim, close with oh, yeah. all of them. You know, he was um, he was uh, well, he you know still is, but he was. Uh, I don't think he has this last year. He basically has been phased out, and Jeff Anderson now has that PR job. And uh, uh, but I, I'm not sure if this means he's done, done, retired, done, done yep. or just not going to be publicly. But anyway, good for him. Well, if the ride with Rice comes back, he can be our intern. He got the place <laughs> up. He's got the lake place up north oh, too. The old go. family lake place yeah. that they love to go up there fishing and stuff like that. So. He's got all that. But anyway, uh, somehow we uh, ended up getting on that topic. But this is Monday Night Sports Talk. Hey, There's only the two of us, and we got to BS our way through 20 minutes. I, because knowing that you and I were going to do this show, I watched nearly the entire round yesterday at the Genesis Invitational. Pretty good stuff. Wow, was that a good what finish. What a great golf course. I mean, they, it's, they were talking about like 18 up the hill, you yep, know, yep. 18 big elevated green like that. 
Uh, Nance talked about 2000, I believe, maybe maybe a little earlier than that when he was first covering it. They used to hit three woods into the 18th green. Oh, wow. Some of them. Now they're hitting pitching wedges. Yeah. So that's so for these old courses to be able to defend themselves, considering that they aren't that much longer, and these guys are hitting the ball 100 yards further off the tee yeah. than they were 20-some years ago, uh, to have these old courses able to defend themselves is pretty amazing. And I'll tell you one thing. Those greens were lightning, weren't they? Oh. You could some of those par fours, the one par four, you could hit the ball down on the front left of the green. It would roll off the back. Well, if, if you didn't get that thing high enough and spin it, to, it, it would just keep going and going. Well, and going. on eighteen, that's is it's Homa, right? Is that how you pronounce his yeah, last it's name? Yeah, Homa. Yeah. His caddy was saying, you know, they they got to make up two yeah. against Rom, and he said, looks at him, he says, should we go for it? Because he knew if he yeah. if he if he drove it, you know, not not give it as much height, mm. that it would roll forever and get yeah. closer to the pin. So you saw yeah. him kind of negotiating yeah. that at the well, end. Well, he, he ended up uh, hitting the pin, right? Yeah, he hit the on pin. the second shot. Yeah, on, on the, the second, second shot, shot. So which would have uh, then made uh, John Rahm uh, uh, have to uh, get the par, have to get up and down. There I didn't realize Rahm was that good of a putter. Oh. Well, he's because I know he's a beast he and can hit. drive the ball. They, they said on a uh, – I wasn't in the car when it finished, but uh, I was in the car when it finished, so I was listening to okay. golf on the radio, which is always interesting. <laughs> but the, the one of their analysts said he hit the ball – he hit the tee ball all week as crooked as he can at a place that has pretty good size rough and mm-hmm. narrow fairways, and he still won because he's, he's up – you know, they do this whole strokes gain. Yep. For the tournament, he gained on, from approach shots, and then which is starting with your approach shot. Okay, he gained twelve and a half strokes on the field, so wow. he was twelve and a half strokes. But that's a huge number. Yeah, and uh, so he his approach shots, even when he was in the rough, were uh, immaculate. So, uh, but how about Tiger hitting the damn thing three hundred? Uh, with one foot, you I could see him when he's it. walking up the hill. He's limping like crazy, and I don't think he's doing it for a fact. Well, no, he's not. But and you can see <laughs> that everyone was kind of waiting it for. Doesn't plant his foot. Well, no. but but that. But as the weekend went along, was he going to be able to hold up? Mm-hmm. Because that was what everyone was worried about. And, and even in that, I think it was after the second round, he was telling the gal that he was interviewing with, "Yeah, I'm really sore. You know, I don't know yeah. how I'm going to feel tomorrow." You know, Saturday, he shot 67. Sunday, he was worn out. Uh, he did do something extremely stupid with the tampon on uh, yeah, with some Thursday, Thomas. but uh, it's just, I mean, it's its Tiger, so they'll let him get away with it. Sure. But uh, but uh, he, he, you can still learn lessons at 46 or whatever it is. <laughs> I'll say. But uh, you know, what's, uh, you know what uh, tells you? He's getting older, though. Male pattern baldness. Oh, he when he took the hat, the hat off. Yeah. off. He had a baby. Can he afford? Uh, can he afford to get a little hair? Or is back it just here? he says, "I'm what Tiger." The what the hell do I tiger. care? Yeah, still, uh, still. But uh, it was great to see the uh, PGA Tour have such a uh, good event with the Live Boys not even playing yet. Is there? Did you? You didn't watch the golf channel at all? Did you? No. I said there's my three favorite things about golf right now. I said this on Twitter. Tiger hitting it over 300 on, you know, on Tiger leg. crushing it off the tee on one leg. John Rahm playing unbelievable stretch of golf. And Brando Chambly's incessant hate for Liv. <laughs> I mean, he just goes after. He just disembowels them on Twitter, on the air. He just hates them. It's fantastic. And my wife is watching the, uh, there's a series on Netflix now. Okay. You know, since Netflix did all that thing for Formula One. Okay. Oh, yeah. Doing yeah that, yes, I mean, yeah. they made Formula One. Very popular, popular again. Popular yep. again. I mean, with 1% of the population, but but they're the golf they're doing that in golf now uh inside the golf and it's not it's not a pr version of it you know it's uh 
And it's, it's a real life the look. Live con- it's covering. It's, okay. it's inside the PGA Tour, but there's a lot of live stuff and shows. Fill, you know, video of them playing with each other. Okay. Or Matt McElroy and Kepka, you know, and now mortal enemies and uh, and uh, it, it's pretty good. I guess I haven't started it yet, but it's uh, she's she's into it. She's I was trying to explain. And that's her thing, though. She loves watching that kind yeah, of stuff. Yeah. yeah, she likes sports. She likes thirty for thirties and stuff right. like that. She, if the Super Bowl's on live, she won't come down and watch it. But uh, if she can get some uh, inside, but if look, the OJ documentary's on, mm-hmm. she's got it covered. I think she's got that one down pat, though. <laughs> She has got it memorized. Really down pat. Yeah. <laughs> so I was going to ask about this, but and I know this is Tiger's baby, basically the the Genesis Invitational. But where does it rank in terms of? I mean, it they had a great field for this tournament. Well, see, there's this. I'm going to talk to Hollis about this. There's as a response to live, they have now come up. They've raised the purses tremendously for. Well, there's 17 events called, uh, what do they call them? Uh, oh, God. What's the term? I'll there's look it up. There's a term for them. Uh, but some of them are the majors, and a couple, three of them are the world golf events. There's about 10, there's about eight or 10 weekly Is events. Is it the Elite Series? The designated, I think designated tournament, or not, it's not a designated tournament. Designate uh, the PGA Tour designated events. Designated events. Okay. Yes, this is a designated event. Last week was too, and the best players on the PGA Tour, you know, the highest ranked guys, have agreed to play oh, wow. in these. Have You're not kidding about the purses here. Holy cow! Played in these. Yes, they upped it. So, what they've done is left the weekly or the other 15 weekly events or so, 16 weekly events, including ours. Uh, where you got to get some of these, you might get two of the top 20. Then you're going to have to sell it. You're going to have to sell it as best you can. Yeah, because uh, this yeah. one had the Genesis Invitational had a purse of $20 million. Mm-hmm. The next one is March 2nd through the 5th, the Arnold Palmer Invitational. Yeah, that also is a $20 million dollar hell, purse. Yeah, and the, you know, the, the TPC was obviously a, you know, a, not a, was already a huge event. And the, the TPC, the the players, is actually yeah, that's a that's a tour event too. So, because what did Rom take home for winning it yesterday? Do we know? Must be about four. I don't know. Nice little payday. Yeah, yep, you're right. Three point eight million dollars. He doesn't. Have, he's not the swashbuckling Spaniard that Sevy was. <laughs> First of all, he hits it fairly straight. He doesn't hit it straight this time, but his real name is. Uh, Rodriguez, you know, oh. I mean, Rob is his middle name, but just to kind of distinguish himself from the other Spaniards, he goes by John. Oh, Rob. I did not know that. Yeah. Okay. And uh, what a player. Whew. We had a life. He's, uh, he doesn't have a lot of, he's pretty straightforward out on the course. He, he seems does. friendly stuff. I was going to say, he. it seems like the, the other players genuinely like him, but he does have that little bit of what Tiger used to have yes. where, when he's in the lead and he's looking at you to make that putt, yeah. you feel a little intimidated. Yeah, I feel uh, this Homa uh, it was it was uh, you know he's been playing good for about two years now. He's a putting fool, and uh, L.A. kid. It is funny how L.A. can adopt. He's one of ours. You know, sure, yeah. well, you got fourteen million people right, right, know, right there in your it's, backyard. It's not like it's not like he's from Bolabic or something, and you say, <laughs> "Oh, he's one of ours," you know, but. Uh, they had a huge crowd out there. Well, I'm I, I don't think I'd like to be walking that golf course at my advanced age. Oh no, up that hill, no, that last no, thank hill. You. And then, because it's it's and Tiger, he didn't give an in, man. He walked. He could have gotten the cart right up the hill to the clubhouse, and uh, he said that's no. really in yep. the valley because it's a canyon, basically. I was going to ask because in proximity to downtown where where is it is it closer to the water where which which way is it i think it says it's two miles of the ocean but uh, okay. they're in a canyon you know one of these many canyons was the riviera where uh oj played i think wasn't it i don't know uh, he was in one of the private clubs i think it was uh i think it was there OJ played so uh yeah so i i i don't know i might have told you guys this before 
How about this? On the morning of June 12th, 1994, OJ played his usual foursome at the Riviera Country, Country Club, Club in Pacific Palisades. Mm-hmm. Wow. And then he, then he, then the murders took place. Well, he said perhaps tellingly, he and one of his buddies got into a violent argument, almost coming to blows right then and there on the second hole. Wow! So he was in a bad mood. <laughs> he was in a bad, in a really mood. bad mood. <laughs> but it was, it was a few days later, though, wasn't it? Uh, was it a little later. Yeah. I think. Oh, maybe. No, it was a while before they zeroed in on him, right? Because the day before the World Cup started. Was when the Bronco chase was. Okay. Yeah. So it was. It was what we took about ten, eleven days to realize he was the murderer, right? I think so. Yeah, I'm trying the to. World Cup started like thirteenth, twelfth, thirteenth, fourteenth, something like that. All I know is in Mr. Harvey Schultz algebra class, we knew it was serious because he said, "Time out, everybody. We have to put on the news." That's <laughs> when we knew it was a big deal oh, at uh, Fairville well, Senior I High was School. At the, the next day, I was at the World Cup opener at. Uh, Washington? Giant Stadium. Giant Stadium, okay. Giant Stadium, Ireland versus Italy. <laughs> and as I, I covered four World Cup matches, and I basically covered the parking lot for all four because I didn't know what the hell I was watching. <laughs> I couldn't break it down. Right. So I talked to the uh, Irish, of course, because I knew they'd be drunk. And you know, <laughs> Jesse, just Jesse, yeah, to quote Jesse Ventura, we knew they'd be drunk. So... And they, I've found about two or three great groups of Irishmen, and they were so upset because there was no World Cup coverage on TV Friday. Oh. Because every channel is this white lorry driving around. What the, you know, where's the World Cup coverage? This is the World Cup. They were so mad. They had no World (laughs) Cup coverage in New York because all we had was this white lorry driving around. and. I said, well, he's a pretty well-known guy. And it's he, kind of a big deal around these parts. And as we say, he killed his ex-wife and a waiter. So, right, they can't uh, ta- they take that away from you. <laughs> no, they, can't, they can't take that away from you. Oh, i got to find that in honor of. <laughs> yeah. Hold on, let's see if I can find that. That uh, was Norm, right? That was... Yeah, Norm, hell yes. Oh, yeah, my the God. 1995 Espies, <laughs> Charles Woodson. Charles Woodson, 1995. Norm's right? first and only appearance yes, hosting yes. the Espies. Not only did he not post them again he wasn't allowed to attend <laughs> uh no. give me a second it's gonna take me well a minute. they also had the anthony mason joke which was uh oh, even, that's right. even more inappropriate uh because the, uh, the uh the the uh <laughs> he yeah anthony got into a little bit of a trouble who well, i think there was an eight or ten year old girl that was honored there and, yeah and he said even too young for anthony mason <laughs> God. And that's where the crowd went, oh, oh no. God almighty. Uh, Let's see if we got it here. Let's see if we got it here. Norm at the ESPYs. Charles Woodson. How about that? And what a season he had. <laughs> Great, and he, he became the first defensive player to win the Heisman Trophy. And congratulations, Charles. That is something that no one can ever take away from you. Unless you kill your wife and a waiter, in which case... <laughs> Though, and I've said this before, citing that clip, is you see they, you know, they 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 have the camera on Norman, yeah. and then of course they pan to the crowd yeah, to get the crowd Charles. reaction. You see Charles Woodson, but sitting right next to him is Ken Griffey Jr. And Ken Griffey Jr. gives a oh no, no, he did not <laughs> just say that, shaking his head like uh uh-uh, uh, he did not yeah, just say right. that. Oh yeah, that some of the brothers in the crowd. Oh my just, god, it was so they funny. Couldn't believe it. There is a <laughs> speaking of him. I saw this just the other day. There's a great clip of, did Michael Jordan, when he was pretending to play baseball, did he attend an all-star game or was there, was he invited or was it at did he, one know, of the year, was at Wrigley Field the, or something? Uh, well, in any he event. show up for the home run derby? I can't remember. He's sitting he there. Couldn't, he couldn't have bat, batted six for the Chad Hassan Redbirds. <laughs> oh, he couldn't I have. Guarantee, what a swing. But he was getting autographs from Ken Griffey Jr. and Puck. In the in the all at the All Star game, he, he had to have been in the clubhouse. Yeah. So I don't know if it was oh, at sure. Wrigley Field or whatever. Yeah, but he's sitting there just like he was a kid, having them sign his hat. Mm-hmm. I thought that was pretty cool. Yeah, it was. Uh, it, it, that story has still never been told. 
of why what, why he why really he tried to play baseball. Playing. They uh, they all think it was that he was going to get suspended for gambling. Gambling. And they uh, they just he came up with he retired and then he decided to fulfill his dream of playing baseball. But the good thing is he bought him a bus, right? Yeah, the Birmingham, the Birmingham Barons. Barons, yes. Managed I, by. I saw him play. Managed by. Do you remember who his manager was for the Birmingham Barons? How Way back you? when he was a great quote too, saying, "Yes, Swain could use a little work." <laughs> yeah, what, what, what? Terry Francona. Really? Yes. That's right. That's right. Terry Francona. I saw him play. I went down and saw him play. Where did you see him at? In uh, against the uh, Nashville whatevers, the. Twins Farm Club, the Double A Farm Club was the Chat- in Nashville. Chattanooga. No, Nashville. No, Nashville. Okay, they were in Nashville then. Okay, Eddie and those guys were down there. I oh, think. really? And uh, yeah, I saw him play. It was I said, "Oh my God, he can't hit. He <laughs> can't hit. He can't hit." It's but those owners didn't big big care because there were no, thirty thousand people at every game. Well, not really, but he, he drove six or eight or oh, was know, it okay? Yeah. Okay. Well, the Birmingham Ballpark. I think maybe they had their new stadium by then, but they, you know, they had Rickwood. Which was the oldest ballpark in America, basically this old wooden grandstand that still stands, I believe, it's a historic old ballpark, and I think they'd already moved to a different ballpark then. Okay, so. and that's what I was getting a little bit jealous, Pat, because this morning the boys and I had we always watch the Fox Nine because they stay local, and they had the live report from Fort Myers this morning, and I thought, Ooh, who's, staring uh, down. who's doing the news? Well, this was, well, Rich was down. Jim Rich was down. Oh, there Rich this was morning. covering it. Yeah. yeah. Rich was covering it. Yeah. That's one, when you get a little jealous. Most, one of my worst things I ever did to a human being. <laughs> Passel was down there for 11. <laughs> <laughs> he brought six shirts to the ballpark. <laughs> and uh, he d- the day that they had, like, the formal interview media day. Sure. I, I couldn't figure out what was going on. He'd interview whoever it was, you know. Oh. It's just, he'd interview somebody. Yep. Then he'd take a break and he'd go change his shirt. And, and, and he basically, what a what a genius. <laughs> he basically played golf for the next five days and had them sit back. Now, good thing nobody got hit in the head with a baseball. Right. And, you know, but this was in the, this was before they were playing games, you know. This oh, was God. like the first day that he was so mad at me. He was we're buddies. I mean, we get along fine. He's great, but it was it was really... How did you bust him? Because this is way no, before I social wrote media. Column. I said, you know, these games are so exciting. You know, something about Passolt is a variety of shirts or something as he does these <laughs> interviews. I wonder why. <laughs> now, you're wondering, too, because you're, if you're back at the newsroom and he's sending you the B-roll you know, yes, to run right. for the 6 o'clock that night, you're thinking... Man, how come the sun angles at the exact same spot every yeah, time yeah, he's talking right. to Dave Winfield? Well, I think that Nestle was probably with him. I think maybe I hope think Richie was still alive then. <laughs> uh, but he was tied in with the you know the the photographer would come out every oh, day. Oh sure, yeah. was shooting. But he was you know Jeff loved the game, man. Oh. Loved to play golf, and he had I don't know how many. He was there a week and five oh. days, probably five shirts. That is spectacular. <laughs> All of cleaned and. Preston oh yeah, looking great. <laughs> <laughs> Too late now, though. He's living down there in Naples or something, so they can't enjoying uh, the good life. Yeah, he is. I saw him at. Uh, when was it? I wasn't there last spring. So 2020, I went to the uh, 2021. I went to the senior opener at uh, Naples. Uh, to see Lumpy. Oh, sure. And uh, kind of the, also COVID was still going on. Yep, yep. And uh, Jeff and his wife were down there following Lumpy around. Because they just had the the senior tour yeah, they, in Naples, right, this past weekend? This yep. week. it's okay. be, the opener used to be in Boca. That was the one my stepson ran for a while. Oh, that's right. And uh, But then they uh, that that thing, they, 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 that thing moved to the end of the season where it's one of their – playoff events okay. in Boca. So uh, uh, the uh, the Naples is the, the – they have one in Hawaii, their own tournament of champions, but the mainland opener is in Naples now. Uh, they, they're in trouble, though, man. Really? Senior. When 65-year-old Bernard Longer is still your superstar and he won yesterday, it's – they, uh, you know, some of these Is guys, it because a lot of these – They're making too much 
too, they made too much damn money, I think. And they, someone, don't, they don't like want to play. Like Phil is playing for a live and getting sure. his millions. And, yeah, they don't, there's no, I don't know, they got a hard time. They're getting a second, second tier players when they turn 50 you know sure. tiger woods is never he might play a senior open but he's never gonna play a, uh-uh, he's not gonna play regularly not, not regularly out there on the on the senior tour and and now you have the designated events and then you have the other events and then you have the corn ferry tour uh there's a lot of golf for tv right sure so anyway speaking of the twins um i have to issue a uh, a grievance with Bally Sports North. Okay. You ready? Yeah. So I set the recorder to record the Diamond Awards because the boys, you know, wanted to watch Patrick give the give the speech and, and had to see Joe yeah. introduce him and all yeah. that. And so I recorded it and so we, we zipped through I go, Well, Patrick's is more towards Last. the end. Yeah. And so we, we zipped through it and there we see Dan Barrera. Okay, here we go. Dan's gonna introduce, then Joe or Lavelle was first, then Dan, then Joe, then you. So we get to you. And uh, we start talking. I said, I'm waiting for the great cheap shot you take at mm-hmm. Rocco. They God. cut it out. They cut it out. They uh, edited it out. I wondered if they were. I was so angry they that did. they got rid of it. Really? Well, and I, I think. I was wondering if they would. And I was thinking, okay, well, and it wasn't even really that bad of a no, cheap I shot. Said, I didn't there's think. There's a lot of things about baseball that I don't like, but Rocco's here, so I'm not going to say anything. <laughs> well, that was that, but then uh, also uh, said, the relief pitcher that passed yeah, Bill away. Bill Campbell. Thank you. Bill Campbell, I said. 100, 410 innings, Rocco. Three years. You'd like to get that out of one of your starters. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, I thought maybe they would. So I, I get I it. I said when I got done, I said, I was afterwards I was talking, I said, if they need to cut a couple of minutes, I think I know where they're going to go. Right. You know, <laughs> so that's fine. I don't care. I know, but I, but, wa- but I is, personally just wanted in. to see it. Oh, sure. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's, that's – uh, I'd say that uh, some of the there was some nervous laughter, didn't you say? I mean, some there was some not hard me, laughter. not at our table. I was <laughs> laughing my ass off. Are you kidding some me? Some hard laughter, but <laughs> some nervous. I think they were. Oh, I think they were pre- hoping that I wouldn't. I wouldn't follow form, but I figured I had to. So be that because that was a Thursday night, correct? Mm-hmm. When the the original event was a Thursday yes. night. So the next day, you know, we come in here to do the show. And Joe and I were briefly just, hey, it was a good time. I, I thought we got out of there a pretty decent decent hour, too. Yeah, I thought it was going right. to be a lot later. Yeah. Anyway, and so Joe said, well, how did I do? And I said, well, you're fine, you know. I yeah. said, here's the only thing, because I've heard the 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 the, the family of Lou Wagberg. Can, I mean, I've heard the yeah, story a million yeah. times. It was still funny. And I said, but here's the only problem. I don't think 90% of your audience even knew who Al Qui was. No, no, that's trouble, yeah. You know. I said yeah. that it's not doesn't hurt the joke itself, but I just said I don't think a lot of people knew who El Qui was. Yes, well, I said, and the and the line was has been found alive. Oh, it was. <laughs> yes, <You> can relax. <laughs> He's been found alive, Lou. I know, but I wrote that in addition to. Oh, you did. I just to say it, and I had it deleted. So the only w- the only thing I wish Joe would have done is gone to further length about. How much he was despised originally as a Twins beat reporter in the clubhouse. That, that's yeah, the only thing I wish. Not so much in the clubhouse, but by his fellow travelers, <laughs> Fowler and Ricey, who said, this guy's an idiot. He, know, he wants Tony to leave it a pinch hit five innings after he left the game. He doesn't Why know. Why can't him. they bring back Olivia in the game to hit? Yeah. <laughs> said, don't put that in your game story, dummy. Yeah. <laughs> but well, he admitted, didn't he admit that? I'll tell you what, though. He was a great sports writer because he saw stuff that the rest of us didn't because we it was so familiar to us that we didn't hardly find it interesting, but he could make it interesting. Because it so, was unfamiliar to him. Yeah. It was, well, didn't he admit the first Major League Baseball game he ever saw in person was the one I he think covered? He covered, yeah, and he forgot to bring his <laughs> typewriter. He thought he was going to come back to the office and write it. You know, I mean, we had good deadlines back then to compare what we have, but not good enough that you could drive back in. He brought a legal plus, pad. Plus, there was more addition. There were more additions than one. Okay, yeah, there was like the there was always like the ten thirty or the ten forty five. The funniest thing though is the oh, the, the, the the Star Tribune. They had, you know, everybody had their own terminology, and theirs was 10th ad. 
Okay. So when you're writing your running story for the Outstate Edition, because you got to remember, in the 70s, the Star Tribune circulated all around the state, print editions. Sure. And the trucks were getting ready to, hell, they'd drive to Bemidji. You know, they'd drive to Moorhead. And and the truck with a game story, it, hopefully, you know, if you get in back then, they would, you know, it, it was, if you had a 1045 deadline, 1030 deadline, you made every game because yep. they started, you know. So they, but you had, they wanted to get the copy. So all they needed was like two graphs when the game ended. Boom, you know, blah, blah, blah. They won and, uh, and this was, well, what I got the and win then, and whatever. Yep. And then everything else was, so you'd, in the fifth inning, you'd start 10th ad. So kind of a summary of what however you so wanted far. to do it. Yep. But, the, you know, 10th inning, 11th ad would be like the sixth inning. Uh, if there was something worth noting, you know, twelfth ad, thirteenth ad, Mister Math could never figure that out. <laughs> you know, ten is ten is first because you might have to then write the more relevant stuff as a second ad, third ad, fourth ad. Right, you know, right. early later in the game. But the tenth ad was your first ad. He could, he just the sweat would be pouring off his head. He couldn't, he couldn't, he just couldn't fathom that you would have a tenth ad, you know, an eleventh ad, and he admits that. And you know, God Almighty, what a beauty! Oh, uh, was, well, the the legal pad always gets you because I can just picture him with his yeah. with his yeah. little bag yeah, and his legal pad. Yeah. Hey. Well, Batson, his his first boss was a complete screwball too. A great writer, but okay. just a weird guy. He didn't want traditional sports writing, you know, because he was weird. He'd write stuff about an old Bible somebody found or something. He was, and he was a great writer, but uh, a very. Uh, I think there was a long period where he liked his alcohol, oh, okay. and he would. He would like summon John Rowe. Always tells the stories about he'd summon him over a little wagon for a meeting, <laughs> and he was sitting there drinking. And John sit down, and Batson uh, wouldn't speak for like a half hour. And John would sit there waiting for him to tell him what he was going to tell him, and then he'd say, well, "I I think you're doing a good job." <laughs> that was it. Now you can leave. Meeting's <laughs> over. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, meeting's <laughs> over. It was a. Uh, it was a weird uh, time. And then, of course, they hired Gary Libman, Dr. Gary Libman, a, with a doctorate in African-American studies from someplace out east and someplace on the West Coast. I mean, decent guy. Worst writer. Uh, he suffered more over a paragraph than Gore Vidal did. I mean, it was, uh, it was un- unbelievable. It was... <laughs> He just suffered. There's the famous story about him that I've told is we had the twi- we had the Patriots Day game. Yes. Fergie Jenkins starts at 11 a.m. It's 11 a.m. in Boston. Fergie gets us out of there in two hours and one minute, and <laughs> which for him was long. Sure. You know, yep. Throw it over. So <laughs> it's a lot. One in the one in the afternoon and the deadline is 10 45 at night right <laughs> 10 first deadline probably 10 15 so father and i go down to clubhouse hell you spend 45 minutes in the clubhouse getting stuff come back up you write the game story uh you get a couple of First, you get a couple of pops in the well you have the, to in yeah the, in, the, in the in the room the boston red sox Hospitality room was the second greatest in the American League behind, behind only, the, only no, we're behind only the Twins. Oh. Now Texas, once Brad Corbin got in there and they served you drinks during the game was a little different. <laughs> that was a was game a, changer. With a very attractive young lady coming in the second inning, would you like to have a? Would you like a refreshment? Yeah, I'll have a gin and tonic. But <laughs> thank uh, you, <laughs> thank you. But uh, uh, you know, anyway. Fowler and I are getting in a cab at 4.30. You know, he's, we each wrote two stories and stuff. And the, the next day, the guy running uh, Sportscom, which was back then as they'd send your copy in, uh, on a Xerox machine, early Xerox machine, 
was livid. He said, this guy, we had to climb out of the stadium. <laughs> he locked it up, and he was still writing. And when we got done, he had 12 paragraphs. It oh was unbelievable. God. The pain, <laughs> the agony of writing a paragraph was unbelievable. Unbelievable. Deadlines were not his friend. No, no. But he loved baseball. He thought he would bring a new perspective to it. So He would have been a great town ball writer is what you're saying. Mm. Yeah, I don't think he would have captured the color of the, uh, <laughs> the, 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 um, the, yeah, what I mean, the, uh, the, the ambience of the, right. of the town ball game. Speaking of town ball. Yes, sir. This is our only chance to talk about it because the Cause mayor Joe's not here. here. So how is the A-B thing lining up? Does it seem to be a popular with the people? Uh, oddly enough, this conversation was being had Saturday uh, between myself and some Jordan Brewer ball players. Mm. They'll Obviously, it's not going to happen for this year, and I'm not sure if the wheels are in motion enough yet for it to happen for 2024, but it's gaining momentum. They've already gotten rid of the Class A loop. Loop, yeah. So now it's just merely a, a mileage restriction. A and, a and B, A and B will have one tournament, the Class B tournament. A will not. The A tournament is done. Correct. And so, there's still the, the, but they're going to play separately. The Twin Cities leagues yes. and the Outstate Bs yep. are going to play separately. But what if if you wanted me? I to, like it. I do too. I think because what's happened is obviously A doesn't have everybody knows this, but A doesn't have the following that the other the other classes do. But and I, they don't have as many teams either. They they're don't. But what this will do then is it's going to prevent the the guy that lives in Hopkins. And doesn't know anybody that runs one of the teams. Well, now he can go play for a Chaska or he yeah, can go play yeah. for a Meesville or yeah. whatever. Whereas before, he was just sitting at home all summer because mm-hmm. he doesn't, you know. Well, did they increase the uh, radius? No, but what I'm saying is before, that guy, because he lived inside of the 494, 694 loop, he just mm-hmm. wasn't playing ball that summer. Yeah. So I think that'll help in a lot of ways. And these. You know the the the, the first ring teams, the the Chans, the Chaskas. They're going the, to put sixteen of them into the state tournament. Yeah, I think that will ultimately increase as we yeah. as we go here. Or no, twenty four. Because you got in. now you got Pat in one region. You're going to have Elko, Dundas, Northfield, Saint Patrick is now a wow. Class B team, wow. and that's just one region. Wow, and they're only taking four. Oh, they're taking four. Okay. And New Market, well, so I didn't so even mention already, New there's Market. There's only going to be four regions? I believe so, yes. Yeah. Okay. Maybe it's a 24-team tournament. I remember writing about it. It's going to be 16, I thought, for this uh, coming maybe, season. Okay. I could be, I, I'm willing to be corrected, but I thought it was well, going to remain 16. I guess most of the A teams signed off on it, right? Yeah. They, I, mean, I think I, everybody I, wants I this. Minnetonka, Miller, Kevin. But uh, the thing that's been nice too, Pat, is that it isn't, this isn't your, your grandfather's state board like it was 15 years ago. They're so much more willing to, to ideas, and they're so much more willing to even just conversation than they were, hell, even five years ago. And the diversity is impressive. <laughs> <laughs> very diverse crowd. Very it's, diverse it's very crowd good. of... Uh... You have Polish guys, German guys, <laughs> Italian guys, Irish guys, a lot of diversity. There is, you know... A couple of Swedes. We, we're good. <laughs> we <got> diversity, yeah. <laughs> Lots of diversity. Well, uh, it will uh, be uh, interesting, to say the least. The interesting thing, of course, is the Victory East and Victory West are now the powerhouses of, I uh, know, yeah. the North. thought they got like 24 teams up there. Mm-hmm. They they have become the up there by Brainerd as the powerhouse of baseball. What's funny is, you know, the, the championship game that we hosted, you know, on Labor Day, it was just neat that a lot of those guys, they all – Grew up playing yes, ball yes, together right? yeah. on both teams. That mm-hmm. was it was kind of cool. That was pretty neat. Well, my when my uh, when I drive up to Brainerd on occasion, I always take the back road. I always take twenty five. Oh, up, sure. up through Pierce because yep. we can stop at Susie's for uh, uh, you know sloppy Joes and mm-hmm. stuff. Uh, drive in, but uh, you drive by the Buckman Billy Goats and all these other little towns and. 
it's uh you know there's baseball up there we just we, we don't associate that area as much with baseball well, and I, you know my knowledge of that area is very very minute but getting to know these guys just from hosting this the tournament last year mm-hmm. the buckman guys were cool i really like to get to know those guys yeah, those, the, those guys were know, cool and, you know when sobieski round on it they had a really uh strong pitching rotation <laughs> tylen gendro <laughs> right one guy <laughs> who's pitching Tyler Gendro. He just pitched nine innings. Yeah, well, he's out there. He's going to go give it a go. Yeah, he it ended up in a, was it a bad bike or car? I can't a, remember, but yeah, he hurt. He hurt a motorcycle elbow, or something a, like that. Yeah. Or a car. But anyway. Well, uh, yes, uh, we enjoyed the golf over the weekend. Oh, I the forgot to NBA mention. The NBA All Star oh, Game God. is the biggest fiasco I have ever seen in All Star Games, which is saying something. Did you tune into it by choice or by accident? I came across it. And said everything else was over, and I turned it on, and I didn't make it through two minutes. It's slow motion layup drill, is what it is. It's preposterous, and and plus you don't know who's playing for who. Right? Why are we having Giannis versus LeBron? What what's wrong with East and West? So we know who's playing for what team. Right? They are so. This is so stupid. It's unbelievable. But. Anyway, that so you couldn't watch that, and the Daytona 500 is like pro wrestling. You drive around for you drive around for 198 miles. I mean 198 laps, two and a half miles each, and then the last two somebody, laps take five hit, hours. Somebody hits somebody, so which is almost in, like jumping off the ropes, and. So you got the crash, and then you got to start all over again, and then you get then somebody spins out, and you got to start all over again. They try to plus talk about foreplay. When I went to the when I went to the day twenty five hundred, the day Dale died is my last one. I've been about four. Noon, you start. You know what they meant when they said you started at noon? They sang the anthem. They said a prayer, of course, because sure. they're Southern rednecks. And they got in the cars and they started driving. Now, okay, 2 o'clock. There's a pregame. There's two hours of pregame. Sure. Starts at 2. 2.45 and they still haven't started. They're doing all the crap. You know, somewhere there should be a website that is devoted to just actual starting times. Right. Super Bowl. I don't care if it says five. When is the ball going to be in the air? When is it kicked? When yes, I want to see the non-athlete running up to the ball <laughs> and kicking it out of the end zone. Right, and then they're coming bringing it out to the twenty. In fact, I don't even have to see that. No. When are they putting when are it they at the twenty-five? First snap. When do they put it at the twenty-five? <laughs> You didn't happen to see my, uh, I'm sure that didn't uh, catch the fancy of a lot of people, but I wrote a column on this Israeli guy who's a record-setting swimmer for the Gophers. Mm -hmm. Bar and a a terribly unpronounceable last name. But Bar, I'm talking to Bar. Bar has one great quote early. He says, I said, he's from Haifa, Haifa, and uh, no, you know, desert. Uh, I said, so how much, how much snow? He said, none, never. And I said, then he pauses and he says, the snow here is okay. I hate the ice. Oh, yeah. You can die at any moment on this ice, <laughs> he said. <laughs> he go, yeah. And then at the end, I said, oh, it's, you know, okay. Do you, do you go to other sporting events on campus, football games? He says, football is the stupidest sport there is. <laughs> They run, They have a play. Then they meet for 20 minutes. Then they have another play. I can't believe Americans go crazy for this game. He <laughs> said it is awful. It's terrible. You now have a new favorite oh, athlete no, in town. He's fantastic. <laughs> Bar, he's great. Anyway, if I could only spell his last name, it'd be good. It'd be good. So. Anyway, there we go. Joe, next week he'll be back, won't he? If he if he is able to find a flight back, I'm sure he'll be mm-hmm. here for Monday oh, night. Oh, he's sports. out of town. Yes, ah, good guy. I bet he went someplace warmer than this. We're yes, not, he we're did. Not gonna, that's good. Yes, he did. Yes. Well, anyway, Twins, uh, they start the they start the exhibition game Saturday. Saturday, right? yeah, with a double header, I believe. Is that There's true? Twin by the. Don't they usually play the Gophers once or something? Yeah. I, 
are the gophers down there? Maybe the gophers are going down. Yeah, okay. I think maybe they are. Okay. Did my Johnny Castino column Sunday, uh, I wrote on John because John has a. Th- he wants to fix the game. To fix the game. Uh, two and two is a full count. Three is a walk. Ball three is a walk. That way the pitchers have to challenge hitters and more action. I kind of like it. It's not going to happen, but I kind of like it. But John, third round draft choice from Rollins College in the Twins' front yard, basically. Yeah. One reason being Calvin saw him hit a home run off Bert Blylevin, except it was a different Italian guy on the team, <laughs> Ricky Ricky Ardello or something like that. But John says, hey, hey. he got me drafted in the third round. I'm all for it. You're saying scouting might be a bit different these <laughs> different days. Now. Yeah, right. We, we, we can differentiate our Italians, that's for sure. Earl, why are you Italian. walking Danny Ford? <laughs> the first one. He <laughs> God, I miss him. He was the greatest. <sighs> Earl Weaver, the greatest. Unbelievable. Especially when he was insulting you, which was damn near all the time. (laughs) All right. See ya. You are inundated with countless home and auto insurance ads surrounding the big game in Phoenix. Did you really listen to those ads? What were they trying to tell you? They are on your side. Let's hope so. They've seen a few things. Well, we all have. And I don't know about this one. You're in good hands? Really? Okay. Or best ever, double check. What are we checking? Their work or ours? Now, what does any of this do for you, by the way? Nothing. They are all only one company with one agent. No options. Call the Canopy Group. Their message is clear. You get 16 companies and 20 professionals. So as your home and auto insurance needs change, the Canopy Group will help you find another insurance company to meet your individual needs. No fancy ads. Just the simple promise of providing you the best insurance coverage at the best price, year in and year out. New clients enjoy an average savings of over $800 with the Canopy Group. Call the Canopy Group at 800 800- 967-3389 or visit thecanopygroup.com. You have heard me discuss my relationship with Josh Arnold for some time. The reason I advocate that you give Josh a call is simple trust and results. Josh has seen it all when it comes to economic and market conditions. As has been said, uh, through all of our relationship, past results do not guarantee future returns. And while that is true, Josh can make sure that your retirement objectives match your investments. You can understand that Josh will make sure you are not paying more in fees than you are seeing in returns. Yes, that is more common than you would like to think. Do yourself a favor and have a booking with Josh for the four. 48-minute free evaluation. This is a no-obligation meeting. Call Josh at 952-925-5608. You will be glad that you did. Investment services offered by Josh Arnold Investment Consultant, LLC, a security investment advisor. Past performance is no guarantee of future results. All investments involve risk. All comments and opinions are Josh Arnold's and do not constitute investment advice. Patrick Royce is a paid endorser.